All right. I'm a little sick, but I want to start this series on the effects of the Kronos. First one up is the stereotype compressor. It's uh, I'm just going to go in order. So there's a few things to point out about this one. Um, first of all, it seems like the settings that I have here are as initialized as you could really get it. Um, I have the mid highs boosted 0.5 because I did notice a little bit of dropout in the high end when I was playing noise through it. And if you want to try to listen to that, I would suggest using headphones or just like really nice speakers. Um, perhaps even high passing the headphones or speakers to see if you can hear any uh, difference in volume in the high end when I put this compressor off and on. So um, right now I believe I have noise set up. And now when I turn it off and on, um, see if you can hear any difference between the high end. Oh, and actually let me put the wet dry on wet. So it does seem to have a bit of a difference, but when I put this uh, 0.5 dB, half dB, you can still hear a slight difference, but it's a bit better than if this were not set this way. So again, this seems to be the most initialized I can get it. Also, just to show you the gain, let me throw a triangle wave on here. Go back to the compressor, and we're resting at... right below 21. And if I put this on and hit the key, so that's pretty much you need to gain at output level 31 with obviously the trim on full for the EQ. So again, this is pretty much as initialized as you can get it. I have the sensitivity on as low as it goes with the attack at as slow as it goes. Um, so first thing I want to go over is this left-right mix. What this decides is if you are processing the channels individually or if you're having the same kind of dynamic reduction happening to each channel. So with left-right mix, anything that's happening um, to the left channel as far as dynamic reduction goes is also happening to the right level even if the right level isn't past the threshold so to help illustrate that let me go to the exi and my amp and then pan it over i'll go left about uh yeah sure 15. let's go actually more extreme Sure, five. So we have a dramatic offset between the volume of the left and right channel. But if I go to uh, the compressor and I'm having the same kind of dynamic reduction happen on both channels, even if only one channel is past the, th the threshold, then when I turn up the sensitivity, we'll notice that it'll um, kind of keep the balance between the, the left and right channel. First, we have to turn on the compressor. So one goes up, the other one stays, uh, goes up as well, um, but also again, re kind of relative to each other. Um, it's almost like if you were to link faders together and you always have the faders, um, you know, stay regulated with each other. Um, I could demonstrate that in QAs, but I'm sure you already know what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, the other one, left, right, individual, it just means that we're, we have essentially a separate compressor for the left channel and a separate compressor for the right channel. Um, so again, we have our signal pin left, and then when we apply sensitivity, Especially with that last bit, we can really see the right channel catching up with the left channel and it not keeping the same balance between the two. So 
but you can see how much that right channel is moving. So if you send a stereo signal through this, uh, something that's panning around left to right, if you have it a left right individual, you're actually going to decrease the panning effect. You're going to kind of make it so both channels are kind of at the same volume all the time, or the left and right speakers are always from that stereo signal are always outputting the same power. Um, if you have uh, it on a mix, though, the panning volume would be retained. So you can kind of think of this as like, if you have it on left, right individual, you're kind of almost pulling things to the center. Not in the sense of mid-side processing, but I think you understand what I'm getting, what I'm, basically what I'm saying. Um, I could do an advanced tutorial on like how this would affect something like a drum set, but for now, let's just move on. So the, the last thing that I really want to cover on here is this dry wet. So right now we have it on all the way wet, which means that we're, we're processing the entire signal. But of course, if we turn that down, we can do parallel processing. Now, unfortunately, the stereo dynamic compressor, otherwise called the DNC one, uh, which I think it originated in the, uh, the Triton, the Korg Triton, and has been implemented in like a ton of Korg products since. Um, but the DNC one incurs a, quite a bit of lag. Um, I think about, well, not, not quite a bit, but, but you know, enough about, uh, about half a mill a millisecond or 0.6 milliseconds. So we're going to get comb filtering and to help illustrate that, let me jump over to our mixer and just throw noise through our, through our compressor. Um, we can take off the sensitivity. Um, so now when I lower the wet, you'll hear a comb filtering effect because of the added delay between the wet and dry signal. And actually let me put the painting on back on center. And to look at that through a spectrum analyzer, Take that off now. See if I go all the way wet. We have a perfectly flat noise profile. But if I take it down to if I take it down to fifty fifty. You see this dip right here at 800. Now I can mimic that another way just to show you that it is caused by lag. I can go over to my insert effects, turn off my dynamic processor, and turn on this this stereo delay. You can see I chained the signal, so we're just having the signal run through this stereo delay right now. Go back to my insert effects, go back to that cross delay. Double click this, choose 0 0.6, and double click the other one and choose 0 0.6 as well. Even though we're only monitoring one channel, it's just for continuity for the headphones. Um, and so now we're only listening to the uh, this very short delay with a dry wet of 50-50. So we're getting the original wet sound and then this delayed sound with uh, zero feedback, by the way. So it's just it would just be like one echo, you can think of it like that. So you can see we see the same dip at 800. And let me go over here. And so just to compare the two sounds. Again. Yep. So it's a 0 0.6 millisecond delay with that. It just means that it's just not good for, again, it's not good for parallel processing since you are getting a, a hefty dip right there in that zone. Um, but, you know, that, that could help some things. And of course, if you are doing parallel processing, you're probably not doing it 50-50 anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so that's it for for this compressor. Um, next time I'll look at, um, uh, 
just, I guess, the stereo compressor. And then I'll continue on to actually the red compressor first. But yeah, thank you for watching this one, and I hope it was informative.